name is Kim Barnes. I am in what I like to call the sunset years of parenting my kids. My husband Lee and I have four children that are 23, 20, 18, and 15 years old. Two of them live on their own in different cities. One is in college and one is in high school and still at home. My kids are very, very different from each other. They have different personalities, different expressions of their faith or lack thereof, different paths that life has taken them. They all grew up in the same house with the same mom and dad, but they are each very unique individuals. I don't think any of them would have been naturally drawn to each other out in the world. I don't think they would have sat together at lunch in the school cafeteria, but they have beautiful relationships with each other, lifelong bonds that have extended beyond the four walls of our house. Now, I'll be honest, I do think we got a little lucky. We have been through some tough things in our family, but my kids are really good people. I also think that we learned some things as we parented. And as I reflect back, there are some things we did that I'm glad we did it that way. And there are some things that given the chance, I would probably do it a little differently. But through it all, we emphasized relationship over everything else. And my kids really do actually like each other. Now I wanna share some of the things that we learned and not all of them are going to work for your family and that's okay because each family is different. But I do hope that all of these ideas can spur some thought and conversation about what may work in your family to encourage positive relationships with each other, especially among siblings. First, create family traditions. Share experiences that bond you together. When your kids look back at their childhood and their time in your home, one of the first things that's going to come to their mind are family traditions. Linked to these memories will be that they shared these traditions with the other people that lived in the house with them. Traditions are instant connectors and bonders. They can be big things like Christmas. We have traditions from December 23rd all the way through December 26th all day long. But they can also be little things like family dinners. We ate dinner together almost every night. Some nights we had to eat at 5 p.m other nights at 9 p.m. due to schedules where people go in different directions, but it was a priority to us because it was when we connected. They can also be kid-created traditions. My kids love to take slushy runs together, so now whenever all four of them are home, they do it. It might be at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., but it's a priority to them and they make it happen. We had campouts every Friday night. Everyone piled in our room. We had a TV in our room at the time. They'd get comfy and we'd watch a show or a movie together. The kids each had their own spots that they claimed and we had a big sleepover in our room on Friday nights. And now as the kids got older and bigger, we spread out and we weren't all necessarily in the same room on Friday nights for camp out. But if the kids were home and we were available, we still had camp out on Friday nights. What matters is that you are creating intrinsic bonds among your kids that will continue, not just while they're in the house, 
but also continue after they leave. You also wanna have fun together. Learn to enjoy being around each other. Now the important word here is learn. <laughs> it's not necessarily going to be natural all of the time. In our house, my kids were pretty much forced to be friends with each other. I told them continually that they had three best friends and they all lived in the house with them. Every single day after school, they would have a snack and then they'd go outside to play with each other. Now, after playing with each other for a little while, they could venture out and go with play with other kids in the neighborhood, but not until they had spent a little time together with each other. Some days they ended up getting involved in something and continuing to play with each other for the rest of the afternoon instead of heading out into the neighborhood. But other days they played with each other for a few minutes and then went out and joined up with some other friends in the neighborhood. Either way, they were learning to have fun together. We also occasionally have family nights and the kids got to take turns planning the activities for our family nights. Now, some of these could be a little brutal. Uh, one of my children was particularly fond of making up very long, very complicated games for us to play. Now, not super enjoyable, but we always ended up laughing and we'd go along with it because you know what? We wouldn't have to do it again the next family night because it would be someone else's turn to decide what we would do that night. Um, over quarantine, those long, long days of quarantine, we started eating dinner outside every evening. Got us out of the house, a little change of pace, and we developed this little ice throwing game, and we invented a new game called Venice, which was a combination of volleyball and tennis. Now, both of these are really silly, but we were having fun together, which was the whole point. Vacations are crucial times for having fun together away from normal life. It could be a big trip like Disney or the beach or the mountains or as simple as going to visit a family member, but all of it is time spent together. Encourage their fun with each other. Remind them of the things that they do actually have in common with each other. Link them up with each other. But also, be each other's people. Lean on each other in good times and bad times. More than being friends, I want my kids to be each other's people. When something happens, good or bad, I want them to turn to each other first. One of the best ways to encourage this is to sometimes take the parents out of the picture. All of my kids know that they can tell each other things that they do not have to tell their father or I. I want them to do that. Whether it's about a boy, a party that's coming up, a teacher they don't like, a friend that's being unkind, unless someone's going to get a hurt, unless someone is going to get hurt, I don't need to know about it. I want you to go to each other be each other's people, and trust each other. We celebrate the big things together. It's non-negotiable in our family. Birthdays, holidays, graduations, we are all in all the time. But we're also all in when something bad happens. One of the worst things our family has gone through was the death of our dog, Rocky. We had him for 12 years and we just all loved him so dearly. When Rocky died, my kids piled on the couch together and cried. They told stories and they held each other. And there was beauty in that grief because they had each other. So whether it's celebrating or commiserating or grieving, encourage your kids to be there for each other, to be each other's people. We also want our kids to take care of each other give them opportunities to need each other create the need for each other 
you want each sibling to feel like they have something to offer to the others. In our family, we have responsibilities instead of chores. And these responsibilities have to do with running the household and taking care of each other. Things like unloading the dishwasher so everyone has clean dishes for their breakfast in the morning. I also tried to set up opportunities for them to do things for each other. If the buzzer went off on a load of laundry, um, why don't we fold that for them so that it's done when they get home? Uh, if someone is running late one morning, we can fix their lunch so it's ready when they come down. If you see someone's wet towel on the floor, instead of walking past it, why not hang it up for them so it's dry the next time they reach for it? When my kids needed something like help with homework or having a friendship issue, I encouraged them to go to each other. I mean, let's be honest, it's a win-win. I sure don't know how to do that math that the kids are doing now, and one of their siblings might remember doing it recently. But this isn't just from the oldest to the youngest sibling, although that is going to be the most natural, easiest way for it to go. But make sure you're giving opportunities for the younger sibling to help the older sibling as well. And make sure that you're encouraging them to help each other and not just help you. Now, those first four ideas were more about forging the bonds, working proactively to establish these relationships with each other. The next couple are more about what to do when things aren't necessarily going as smoothly. This is a hard one. Let them fight. Teach them how to resolve conflict. It's hard to do, but it's so important. Kids need to learn how to resolve conflict without you always stepping in. As parents, sometimes we feel like our goal is to prevent conflict. We think conflict is a poor reflection of our parenting or our children's dispositions, but that is just not true. There is always going to be tension or conflict and what better place to teach our kids how to resolve it than in the safety of loving relationships in your home? Now, the Barnes are a fiery family. We love really big, but we also fight big. More importantly, though, we are always willing to work it out and apologize to each other. Now, I will step in if there's cruelty involved or if it's getting physical. But if they're arguing over a toy, let them try to figure it out. And if they're getting on each other's nerves, let them try to figure it out. If you see a certain topic coming up over and over again, you might try to talk to them about it when things aren't heated and come up with a plan for how to handle it next time. Something like, I've noticed that you seem to get upset whenever your brother plays with the green truck. Why do you think him playing with the green truck makes you feel so angry? Some kids may need a safe word when things are going in a direction that's making them feel uncomfortable or attacked. For one of my more tender-hearted kiddos, she would say jelly bean when things were getting a little too close for her. Now, this was an indicator to the other siblings to back off, but if I happened to hear it, it was also an indicator to me that I might need to step in in that instant or talk to her about what was going on. Your kids might need space that they can go when they need a minute. In our house, when the kids were little, we had a blue couch, and the blue couch had three separate cushions on it. And when the kids needed a minute to work something out, I would tell them to go to the blue couch. And they knew that that meant one of them on to sit on each cushion and leave that one cushion empty between them for the space. They could not get up from the blue couch until they had sorted out whatever was going on. 
Now that blue couch is long gone from our house, but I can still say to my kids, do you need to sit on the blue couch? And they know exactly what I mean. On road trips, when things were getting a little loud or it felt like arguments could be brewing, we would say, hands on the windows. And we had a minivan, so each kid had a window and they would turn and place their hands on the glass and look outside the window um, just for a little bit. This gave them and me a moment to breathe and then we could go on with our trip. We also let our kids see Lee and I argue. But more importantly, we let them see us argue, work it out, apologize, say we love each other. And it's also important for us to apologize to our kids when we need to. And then lastly, parent each child as an individual provide security in who they are. Now this is by far the most important thing you can do to help avoid sibling rivalry. You cannot group parent. It's just not fair. Of course you can have house rules that everyone needs to abide by, but God created each one of our kids differently. And so they have to be parented differently. As long as you were honest and upfront about this, they'll handle it fine. Not everyone is wired to get the same grades as the other, but everyone can try their personal best. Not everyone needs the same amount of sleep each night. So there doesn't have to be a set bedtime, but there can be a set go to your room time each evening. In our house, two of my kids, just don't need as much sleep as the other two. When they were really young, we had a go to your room time versus a bedtime. And some of the kids, as soon as they went to room, hopped in the bed, were ready to go to sleep at 8.30. But some of them needed a little time to read, listen to music, wind down a little bit, and then they were ready to go to sleep. Now, once they hit high school, we stopped having bedtimes in the house. The kids need to learn to make decisions about time management, how much rest they need, the repercussions of not getting the rest that they need. However, based on decisions that the kids have made, some kids may have to be watched more closely if trust is broken. And that's just a natural consequence of their behavior. Make sure to spend one-on-one -on -one time with each kid. My husband went on simple dates with the kids each week. Very, very simple things like going for a walk after dinner or grabbing a donut on the way to school. Just intentional one-on-one -on -one time with each of them. Now, I didn't go on dates with them, but I would grab a particular one or two of them to help me with a task or run an errand with me. It just allowed for intentional time to parent each of them as individuals. And make sure each kid knows their strengths and that you are proud of each one of them equally, even if not in the same way. You pass that math test, awesome, hang it up on the fridge. You got straight A's on your report card, awesome, hang it on the fridge. Yep, I'll be on the front row of your chorus performance. And I will also be in the stands during your volleyball game. Call out the things that you see in them as individuals, things that make them unique and special. Relationships with family can be really difficult. And like I said, not all of these ideas are going to work for you and your family. But just think about some of these things, how they might work in some places in your household and what you can do to encourage life 
lifelong relationships and bonds with your family.